Hello and welcome to our video on form customization. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to create custom forms in the system, how to assign those various forms to the different groups in the product, and try to cover a little bit of each area of the form customization tool to give you a really good overview of how it works. For full details on everything you can customize in the form customization tool and all the options, uh, I would refer to you to the online documentation. So I'm already logged in to track it. I'm going to go ahead and click on my menu and select configuration. Then I'm going to click on the form definitions button here on the left. And here's the form customization option. If I click on form customization, you'll notice two options, primary application forms and assign forms to groups. The first thing I'm going to cover is assign forms to groups to give you a little bit of an overview of how this works. On this screen, you pick your group and then you pick the form that you want to use for each group. So right now I only have one default ticket form, one default assignment form, which is the child ticket, and one default solutions form. So let's go back and create a custom one so we can see how all this works. So we're going to go under primary application forms. Here's the default forms we mentioned a moment ago, ticket, solution, and assignment. Now notice I can't edit these because they're system forms, but I can click new to create a new form and base my new form off one of those. So I'm going to select ticket because I want to make a new ticket form. I'm going to select the ticket form to copy and I'm going to give it a new name. Then I'm going to click save and the form designer for the new ticket form will pop up in a separate tab here. Now if you've done any software development you'll notice that this looks kind of like a standard IDE where you have kind of your palette of what you're working on here in the center and then in this column here, you have all of the different fields and tools and properties that you can use on your palette. This looks exactly like the default ticket form, yet it's not a live ticket form. It's in design mode. So I can click on a field here and resize it, or I can move it. If I don't like where it's located, if I want to remove it completely, let's say I don't want my users to know who opened a ticket, I can click on this and I can click the little X button here and it'll delete the selected object. It's going to give me a confirmation and there it's gone. Notice I can also select things like these group boxes. I can remove that if I want. Again, a confirmation. If I want to make a group box bigger, simply drag it. If I want to make my additional information field bigger, simply drag it. If I don't like having this background here, I can click on that and remove it. So I can move all these fields around, delete them, I can add new fields by clicking a field on the right. I just single click the field and then I move over here to the left and click where I want to drop it and it's done. Now, if I want to resize it, I can, I can just click and drag. If I want to resize the part where the data actually goes, I can click that little selector and resize it. Let's say I want to change the name of a field. You'll notice when I click on the field, I notice down here in the bottom right under field properties, you'll see field name assigned to full name label text assigned to full name. It has a font style and some other information. So here's where I can actually change the properties of the field I have selected. So if I want to click in here and say just full name, I can just remove this part. And when I exit that field, you'll notice it changes on the screen. Now that gives me more room if I want to actually resize this part and make it a little bigger. I can also change the font style by clicking over here and selecting bold. As soon as I exit the field, Notice it makes the change. I can click out of there or I can tab out. Change the color scheme. I can click on dark, make it light. And now I have a light colored font. If I do this, I'm going to have to place it on a dark background so that I can actually see the value that I've just changed it to. Now, if I'm sick of this field altogether, again, I can click the X button here. Answer OK to my confirmation. Notice there's a trash can button here. Don't get confused with this. This is actually the toolbar of your ticket and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's look at some of the other options you have here. You can change the tool tip that pops up when you hover over with your mouse. So notice you can also change the X, Y position and the height and width of the field. That helps you get a nice alignment to your fields on the page. Uh, that's actually a nice transition into covering the rest of these toolbar buttons here at the top. So we looked at delete already. You can also change the size height here and you can multi-select by using control and then you can use this to make all those fields the same size in height. You can use the button next to it to make all those fields the same size in width. 
you can use this button to align the bottom edges of fields, which I wouldn't want to do right now because I've selected a vertical column. I would do that if I'm doing two fields like this that are side by side. I could say align the bottom edges, and you'll notice that slight movement there to align those. If I want to do align the top edges, I can click that button, and that will make the top edges of the selected fields align. There's also right align, left align, and then there's also the tab order. So the tab order is where I can adjust what order these fields are tabbed through using the tab key. So if you want to change one of these fields and move it around, you just use the little up down arrows here on the right to change the order of those tabs. And then when you save this, when you're actually using the ticket, you'll notice that using the tab key will go through the fields in the order that you've selected. So I'm going to click cancel for now. We've already looked at fields and resizing them and moving them around and changing the caption. You can also make them read only. So I could make this field read only. If I tab out of that, notice it changes it to read only. So important thing to remember there when you change a property, you want to exit out of that change by clicking the tab key or the enter key to get out of it. So if I go back here and I say false is not read only, and I hit enter, it goes back to not read only. So I can hit enter or hit tab to tab out of that to confirm that value. You can also make something required. So this field is required. Notice the asterisk next to it. There are some exceptions, however. The category field here is always required. The priority field, if I want to make that required, I can click on that. And I can click on the required option here, select true. And now that field is required. Notice the asterisk that appeared there next to the name. I can also filter drop downs. So here it says filter. I can click on this link and it will allow me to filter out what values show up. So if I only want certain priorities to show up in this list, I can come here and I can click on this and I can say priority name equals high, for example. I could type that in. So now I'm only going to see records where the priority name is high. That allows me to filter out values that I don't want users to see for whatever reason. That might be for particular departments or particular locations or basically your different groups that you have. Now let's take a look at these buttons up here at the top. Each one of these buttons has similar settings down here on the bottom right. I can also come over to buttons here on the right side and I can add additional buttons. So this is a customized button. I can click on this. I can say I want to put it here in my toolbar. And when I click on that, I get some options. So I can change the tool tip of that button. I can change the name of the button, call it whatever I want. I can change whether it's visible or invisible, its position. And then I can add a link here that I want to open, or I can add a form that I want to open. So if I hit open form and I click on this drop down below there, then I can select which form I want to open. So I can have it open a category form or a requester form. If I want to just open a URL, then I just click on this drop down here, say open link. And then I can just put in the custom URL that I want to be open when I click on this button. And I can even customize the graphics file that shows up here as well by clicking this little button here on the right and picking a different icon. You notice there's also a save as template button. If I click on that, drop it here as well. This gives me the ability to fill out my help desk ticket the way I want it and then click the save button and save it off as a template. And then of course the template drop down here allows you to pick a template and the ticket ID of course is the ticket ID. Now you can also remove any of these buttons on the screen. So say for example you don't want your technicians to be able to print records, you could click on this and remove that button. Okay. And say you don't want to be able to delete records from here, you can click on this and remove that button. Okay. And let's say for this particular example we don't want them to access our templates either, so we're going to remove that as well. Then we're going to come over here we're going to put our summary field back and we're going to select all these and align left so we give it a nice look again then I'm going to drag this field back out so it matches and I'm going to change that from summary to short description because there are some people that call it that so that's my change I'm going to shrink this back up but I'm going to make it even smaller than normal I'm going to shrink this one back up as well Okay, and so that's all the changes I'm going to make up here. Let's take a quick look at these tabs down below. If I click on the Ticket Notes tab, I can click on this label here and change the name. I can call it Notes. 
that'll make the change. Under grid property, I can click here and I can say which fields I want to show up in that grid. So right now I've got the date, the technician name, the activity code, the note type duration. I can remove those if I want. I can also change this word order from ascending, descending, that type of thing. And here's all the different fields I can put in that grid if I want. If I want to add one, I can click on this, move with the right arrow, and now it's in my list, and I can save it. If I click on Assignments, you'll notice I have a similar option as well. I can rename, change the columns, and Attachments has similar options as well. I can rename, or I can click on here and change the columns as well. There are two more things we haven't really talked about. Controls. There's a few options in here. If I want to draw a line, for example, I can click on that click here and then I can draw a line. So let's say I want to have a nice separator between here just because I like the way it looks. I can do that. If I want to add some text to the screen, I can click on that and then I can change that text to whatever I want it to be. I can add vertical separators. I can add a field set. And then within that field set, I can drag it out, and then I can put fields within here. So this is just a nice way to organize your work, kind of like you'll, you'll notice this is a field set here, but it's got a dark background. So if I click on this one and I go back here and I say dark, you notice it now has a dark background. I'm not going to keep that there, but that gives you an idea of how to play with the layout here a little bit and make it look how you want. I can click on this load record by sequence number, drop that on here as well. That allows me to search for a particular help desk ticket. So if I want, I could put this up here. And then I could use that to search for a particular record. The last thing I want to look at before we leave this screen is the menus option. Notice there is a actions menu. There is an assign to menu. And there is an open tickets menu. Those buttons are already on my list here. If I want to remove one, I can. And then you'll notice that the option becomes enabled over here, so if I wanted to put it back, I can. Okay, now that I've added this back to the screen here, notice it's got a red box around it. I need to go under my options here and turn these options back on so they're visible in the menu. You can decide which ones you want to display or not, but I'm going to turn them all on because that's the default. Notice you can change the name of the menu item it shows up in there, and you can also change the shortcut key. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. Then at this point, we can either reset the form back to defaults, or we can save it and use it in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. The form has been saved successfully. I'm going to click OK, close the form customization tool. Now I'm going to go back, click on form customization again, click on assign forms to groups, pick the system administration group, and under ticket, I'm going to select new ticket form and hit save. Then I'm going to log out and log back in so I can check out my new ticket. I'll log back in, making sure I pick the system admin group. Now I'm going to click add new ticket. And now I see I have my new ticket form and I have all my changes. Notice my new buttons are there. My sequence number field is there. This field's a little shorter. Notice I have the last modified field in this view now. There's a separator here on the bottom and here on the side as well, an extra separator here. So notice all my uh, changes that I made are now on my ticket form. If your browser is blocking pop-ups, you'll happen to make an exception for the Track It website so that the form customization editor can pop up in a separate tab. The last important thing to note is that you can have a different ticket form for each and every group you have in your system. So if you have a help desk group, an administrator group, a facilities group, an HR group, however many groups you have in the system using the product, you can have a different ticket form, a different assignment form, and a different solution form for each and every group. So that concludes our overview of using the form customization tool. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner and sidetrack it. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community, where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. 
and for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.